The NBA playoffs are finally here. Conor McGregor is in hot water. LeBron James to the Knicks. The New York boys this summer are back, but what's up with the weather? Dilly Dilly is causing some controversy. A University of Alabama student is breaking for the next level. All that and more on What's the 401 Sports, coming right up. Welcome and thanks for joining us for this week's edition of What's the 401 Sports. I'm Keisha Wilson. And I'm Mike McDonald. Peeps, it is here. The NBA playoffs are here. Mike, in the run leading up to the playoffs, what were your predictions? Did they come true? What did you not expect to happen? Well, as far as the Eastern Conference is concerned, Keisha, I think one of my disappointments over the course of the last couple of months has been the Washington Wizards. I thought this was a team that was really going to creep up in the standings and was going to find a way to make a push. And they've just been at the bottom of the barrel. I think they're certainly one of the lower seeds now in the East. Uh, and I've been very disappointed by that. I thought that this was a season where they could really you know, compete uh, and possibly get out of the Eastern Conference. To me, the biggest surprise, I think, overall in the NBA over the course of the last month or so, maybe month and a half, has been without a doubt the, the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, they're on this monstrous winning streak. They've climbed in the standings. I think now they would be the third seed if the playoffs started today. I know we still have a game left, uh, or a couple games, two games left, uh, depending on each team's schedule. So to me, the Philadelphia 76ers, who have struggled for so long, now getting 50 wins this season, uh, that to me has been remarkable. And I think in the Western Conference, just to finish off, uh, it's pretty much been what we'd expect. You know, the toe top teams, the Golden State Warriors, who have had to deal with some injuries here and there, and of course the Houston Rockets as the number one overall in the West, and for a lot of people the favorite to win the whole thing. I think things have gone pretty much as expected. Yeah, I agree with you. In, in terms of what I predicted, the West is the wild, wild West still. There's so many teams that that, that conference is just stacked with talent, and there's a lot of teams battling each other for playoff positions and to knock off the Warriors. LeBron is who I, I expected him to be, who he normally always is, which is an MVP caliber player and a superstar, uh, almost a man amongst boys. It just seems like he, his talent level, it, his physicality is so far above everybody else. So that is who, you know, what I, I expected. Uh, what I didn't expect, like you, were the 76ers. I did not I thought they would just be battling for the eighth spot, the last spot just to get in. But to be in the top half of the conference and have a chance to you know, finish top three is amazing, especially when they're doing it on the backs of two young stars like Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Um, what I didn't predict actually was Houston Rockets sitting in the first place in the West. I knew that they would give the Warriors probably the most legit chance at, you know, um, not making it to the finals, but I did not realize how good they were going to be because the, the question was how well could James Harden and CP3 coexist? And the answer has been written. It, they more than exist. They exceeding, they do exceedingly well. At this point, if I'm not mistaken, they've only lost two games. The Houston Rockets have only lost two games with James Harden and Chris Paul on the floor. So that is amazing. And what I did not predict and what was disappointing for me in the West was OKC. I thought that Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo Anthony would really, really be probably top three, maybe really challenged, but they have struggled mightily. And we've seen, you know, Carmelo, I, I'm so, I, I really like Carmelo. I really do. And I wish him well, but he is starting to look his age in basketball terms and that's old he's 33 and he's he's not doing he's not looking that great so I, I can't wait to see what happens when the playoffs actually begin no it's going to be exciting absolutely well you know Keisha we move on to the octagon and UFC fighter Conor McGregor is always going to remember his time here in Brooklyn. Of course, McGregor was arrested and charged with felony, criminal mischief charges, and mischief, uh, misdemeanor assault, menacing, and reckless endangerment after McGregor and his entourage stormed Barclays Center last Friday and when he threw a hand truck at a bus full of some of these fighters during the news conference for UFC 223. Is Dana White now done with McGregor, Keisha, or do you think he'll return? Man, no, Mike, this is really crazy because I don't live too far from the Barclays Center, and I happen to be across the street from the Barclays on the night that this occurred. Now, I don't know at what time this actually occurred and if I was actually in the area, but 
I will say that UFC and Dana White are not going to be finished with Conor McGregor because he's so much a, a big name and really synonymous with the UFC and really puts the UFC on the map whenever his, he's involved. But he cannot go on with their relationship without any consequences. This was really an uh, ugly mark on UFC. And then some people or think are of the opinion, oh, well, what do you expect? This is a, a, a sport that's violent and it's full of testosterone, machismo. Like, you know, this is the Conor McGregor brand. But this is criminal. This is and dangerous. Six people lost out on money. From Connor in one fell swoop because three fights were canceled because three of the people on the bus were injured and then of course they couldn't fight so then their opponents couldn't fight so not only did they lose money that night we don't know what's gonna happen going forward because one fighter Ray Borg actually had glass in his eye and that's why he couldn't fight and we don't know if he's gonna fight be able to fight again there hasn't been any word on the extent of his injuries um, so Conor McGregor, I mean, I don't know if he tricked out all his Mayweather money, but he might want to keep a reserve because I think there could be some civil lawsuits going on against him because these were innocent bystanders. They had nothing to do with the beef that ha that caused this between uh, Conor McGregor and the and the bus. So he's not done with the UFC, but I Dana White can't let him in without any consequences. Yeah, I think uh, the sad part about this was it was an exciting weekend for the UFC. They've been here in Brooklyn before, and Con Conor McGregor really just put a damper on the whole weekend with his idiotic actions. I think just some of the thoughts from MMA fans and a lot of people around MMA, uh, just sort of as you pointed out, Keisha, well, it's, you know, what did you expect? This is the type of attitude that you're going to get from these fighters. But this was despicable. You know, this was really disgraceful. And, uh, you know, as far as consequences, the thing is, is that, you know, Dana White realizes that Conor McGregor is a big-time moneymaker. Uh, and, of course, speaking of moneymakers, there's this whole idea that he's going to wind up fighting Floyd Mayweather down the line in, an, in a UFC fight. Uh, but this, the last thing I'll say about this is, with a guy like Conor McGregor, in a lot of ways, uh, this mimics what we're seeing with society where people are being rewarded for their irrational me, me, me attitude, idiotic behavior, whether you see it from the president, whether you see it from a guy like um, uh, with the Ball family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in other words, people who just show absolutely no humility and they just show this complete reckless behavior, in particular here with Conor McGregor, it's almost like you get rewarded for it. And there should be some type of consequences for this guy. But you know what? He still sells, so I can't imagine what it's going to wind up being. Yeah, so we'll see as this plays out in court. So we're going to move from battling in the octagon to battling on the gridiron. And we go to Baltimore, where the Baltimore Ravens signed quarterback Robert Griffin III, a.k.a. RG3. And um, this has gotten Colin Kaepernick fans livid. Mike, with the signing of RG3, do you think that Kaepernick's, Kaepernick's fans have the right to be outraged? Well, first off, I'm going to say I'm happy for RG3 because he deserves to be in the NFL. Uh, he, you know, Obviously, he shouldn't be a starter, but this is something that was well-deserved for him. He deserves to be on a football team, and I'm glad that the Baltimore Ravens reached out to him. As far as Kaepernick fans, I, I, I do see that this is kind of another smack in the face where you see guys who, without question, let's face it, Colin Kaepernick is a little bit a step above RG3, even though we haven't seen either of them play in a long period of time. The thing is, if it was any team Team, aside from the Baltimore Ravens, this could be justified. But the Ravens reached out to Colin Kaepernick. They weren't necessarily going to sign him, but they were all willing to bring him in for a practice. And there is no question that they were looking for the possibility of bringing Colin Kaepernick on the team. And then we don't have to get into the whole situation with Kaepernick's girlfriend going on Twitter and making these idiotic tweets about what she said about with Ray Lewis or this or that. And everything just sort of blew up uh, from that point. So I do see how, how without a doubt... Colin Kaepernick fans, it is another smack in the face then where you're seeing these guys who are not as talented as he is, all right, who are getting these jobs, but at the same time, it's with the Baltimore Ravens who are more than willing to at least bring him in for a practice, and then everything just fell apart. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, it's tough for me because I do believe that Colin Kaepernick is being back blackballed, but at some point, we need to look at what Kaepernick's responsibility is in this whole play. As you mentioned, it was reported that it, it, he... Uh, Ray Lewis was working behind the scenes and really working to get Kaepernick in and actually sign. But it was that tweet 
from Colin Kaepernick's girlfriend from which he did not disassociate himself. He did not make anything public saying that was my girlfriend's views, not mine. I don't share those sentiments. So the natural assumption was that there was something they either planned or he was in full support of her. Um, and then also, you know, he, he's, he filed a grievance against the NF owner. So now he's already, you know, kind of further in this undesirable category. And then on top of that, he goes to a deposition wearing a Kuta Kente shirt. Now, when you are trying to work for someone, there is a little bit of song and dance. There is a little bit of nuance that takes place. Anybody who has ever interviewed for a job knows the routine. You have to present yourself in a certain way, even if you don't want to. Do you think I necessarily want to wear heels and a business suit to an interview? No, if I can roll up in jeans and a nice t-shirt or a nice sweater and a nice pair of like Uggs or something, that's what I would do. But that's not what my employer, my prospective employer wants to see. So at some point, I, and I'm not saying that you completely abandon your views and your beliefs, but you have to kind of play the game so you can at least get in the door and then just start making, you know, making a little ruckus. I mean, I've done that before, you know. Right. <laughs> my my shorts got my skirts got a little shorter once I got the inter <laughs> once I got the job, but you know, still very very tastefully appropriate. So, um I understand the the anger, but I don't think it's purely justified. But don't go away because when we come back, we'll have more of what's popping. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> But when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Pell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always yeah. worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. And now we have some quick bites. Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton was involved in an accident when his Ferrari F12 was rear-ended by a dump truck. According to DMZ, Cam Newton was not injured. Former New England Patriots tight end Jermaine Riggins told TMZ that he believes that current Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski is upset with the organization because he feels as though he's not being paid what he's worth. University of Alabama guard Colin Sexton has officially declared for the 2018 NBA draft. Sexton becomes the first player since the institution of the one and done rule before the 2006 draft to come to Alabama for one season before departing for the NBA. Boston Red Sox minor league prospect Michael Chavis just cost himself 80 games worth of his player development and salary after testing positive for a banned substance called DHCMT. And we have a congratulations to the Villanova Wildcats for winning the 2018 NCAA Men's Tournament. And what would NCAA Tournament talk be without mention of Sister Jean? Sister Jean threw out the first pitch at the Chicago Cubs baseball game. Augusta National Club officials are attempting to crack down on unruly uh, fans. So they have decided that they do not want to hear the phrase dilly dilly by anybody attending the Augusta National. Mike, do you just think these officials are just being plain old silly silly? At first I did, but Keisha, reading more into this, I don't think so. They're not trying to, to sort of, um, uh, you know, publicize this fraternity type behavior. And they don't want people acting like jerks on the golf course. Not to mention, this is a chant that comes from a Bud Light commercial. So, like, like, golfers don't drink Bud Light. I mean, this is just plain old silly, silly. I mean, let's just kind of get with the times. You know, we talk about how football is kind of stuck in the past. I think golf is kind of stuck in the mud. Let's just liven it up a little bit. Dilly dilly it all up. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. 
switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Our photo of the week is a picture of Brooklyn Nets rookie center Jared Allen blocking a shot at the rim by Milwaukee Bucks forward Jabari Parker. The Nets defeated the Bucks 119 to 111. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 401 Sports. We are in our New York state of mind with our New York sports report. Mike, let's just have a little bit of fun of baseball. It's still early in the season, but who do you think between the Yankees and the Mets is favorite to get to the World Series. I'm still going to stick with the Yankees. I know that they're struggling right now, and they're playing 500 baseball. The bullpen struggled in the beginning. Giancarlo Stanton is a strikeout machine. Aaron Boone has dealt with his rookie struggles as the first-year manager with this team, and they, without a question, have a long way to go. Uh, meanwhile, the Mets have been sensational. They've got off to this red hot start. They just swept the Washington Nationals with a big series. You know, there's a huge series within their division. But I think when it comes down to it, I, just, I think that the Yankees still have enough talent that's going to get them by. The biggest question they have, though, when they do wind up making the playoffs, is they have to deal with this lethal Houston Astros team. Uh, I'll just finish with this, though, Keisha. I think you do got to give some credit to the Mets. First-year manager Mickey Calloway, he's done a very good job with this team. They're in the thick of things. It's still so early to tell. you got to give them some credit for this red-hot start. I'm still going to stick with the Yankees, though, to, to be the team that's going to push it until October. I'll, I'll go with the Yankees as well. I mean, the Mets are red hot, and I feel as though I've heard this story before. They started off hot, and then they just kind of fell back to earth. And the one thing about the Mets that always makes me nervous is the injuries that they always seem to have throughout the season. And they're to like, some major players, and so that derails them. And then they tend to have these sleepy bats. So... I commend them for the hot start. I wish that they continue. I, I love reading the headlines with Thor, Noah Syndergaard, DeGrom. Maybe Matt Harvey of old will make an appearance. So, But I think that the Yankees are, obviously have the edge because they made it to the playoffs last season. And they've kept most of their players, yes? Yep. So they may, they've kept most of the players that got them that far. So I don't think there's any reason why they can't get at least as far as they did last year and maybe even further. Good point. But it would be interesting if the Mets did make it to the World <laughs> Series over the Yankees. Ooh. Or if they made it together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> well, we move back to the NBA, Keisha, because a billboard went up right near Madison Square Garden attempting to re recruit none other than the king, LeBron James. Dwayne Wade says, good luck with that one. Do you think LeBron James would ever consider the New York Knicks? Mike, the question is... Why would he ever consider the Knicks? Is it the bright lights, big city? Nah, he's a, he's a Midwestern man. That stuff doesn't really bother him. And if he wants to go to a big city, L.A. is a much better attract, uh, is a much more attractive offer with the Lakers constituted as they are. Um, so, and, you know, to attract LeBron, you got to have some shiny pieces to make him take notice. And the Knicks do not have that at all. And they don't they're not able to bring in any shiny pieces. I mean, look when Kevin Durant hit the free agency market before he signed with the Warriors, he only took a meeting, he being Kevin Durant, only took a meeting, this is what was, what was reported, with Phil Jackson as a common courtesy. He had no inclination whatsoever to come to New York 
uh, to play with the Knicks. And this was Phil Jackson, the coach with 11 rings and the star power that he has and the accomplishments that he has. He couldn't even get Durant or anybody even close to Durant's caliber to come here. So as of now and what we project to the next few seasons, you know, he's not coming to the Knicks. Nice try, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely no chance he'll wind up coming to the Knicks. I mean, as you pointed out, there's really nothing that's going to allure him to want to come to play here. As you said, you know, he's a guy from the Midwest. He's not going to be... Um, you know, drawn in by the glamour and glitz of the Big Apple. And, and, you know, the Knicks, they've just fallen so low that what LeBron James' intentions are are most likely him thinking, what's going to separate me from Michael Jordan? Because we know that deep down what's pushing LeBron James is this drive that he has that he thinks that he can take over the top spot for the greatest player of all time, which, I mean, if you've watched over the last 25 years of NBA basketball, I don't think that they do belong in the same category. I think category. I think Michael Jordan is so far superior ahead of LeBron James because of his ability to take teams on his own and win championships without other people's help. Now, I know you play with Scottie Pippen and all that, but I think just... What's going to happen here is LeBron James at the end of the season, he's going to have a lot of these teams jumping at him and offering him uh, a chance to come. But the Knicks, he's not even going to think <laughs> twice. And also, just quickly before we move on, management. James Dolan is the head of the New York Knicks. We know those of us who are local to the area, if you are far away and you, you are a Knicks fan, you know the struggles in that front office. I don't think LeBron James wants to come and uh, work for James Dolan, regardless of whether or not James Dolan cuts a big check. So <laughs> we'll move on to our Brooklyn Nets. So when Milwaukee came to play the Met, um, sorry, the Nets, they probably thought they were going to get a win over the Nets, who have been struggling. But the Nets proved them wrong by beating them 119 to 111. The Bucks are trying to solidify their position in the Eastern Conference playoffs. So when the Nets won, Mike, there's been this idea about why, um, this question of why do teams who are obviously out of the playoffs seem to play so hard? Well, one thing I think that's happened is the NBA has done a good job at this over the course of the last year or so, is that they're strongly encouraging these teams at the bottom of the barrel, look, we're doing this... Um, you know, we want these teams to go out and compete against these playoff teams to so that, you know, that we're, it's the anti-tank, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, we don't want you guys to go out there and just go out and purposely lose so that you can go out and get better draft picks. I think what you're also seeing, though, from the Brooklyn Nets, they're trying to get a little bit of traction and momentum as they head into this offseason. And there is no question, not just by the fact that they have more wins from last season, but there's a more of a togetherness. I think there's more of a culture. I think that there's just more of this upbeat positivity as opposed to what was happening last season heading into the offseason. And I think that the Nets and some of these other teams that are in, you know at the bottom of the NBA, they see that and they want to sort of capitalize. And the last thing I'll say is, it feels good when you have nothing to lose. When you go out in a game and you're playing against a team that does have something to lose and you beat them and you show them, look, maybe not this season, this isn't our year, but maybe you know we have something to work for. And, of course, the Philadelphia 76ers, this team who's now made this really strong push in the Eastern Conference, they're showing that you can go from not necessarily worse to first, but from very, very bad to pretty good. Right. So one thing when I uh, – the first thing that came to mind is that – some people are playing for the contracts, and they need to end the season with a bang if they are going to re-sign with their current team or get the attention of other um, teams in the free market. And so, you know, you just go all out because you don't have nothing to lose but everything to gain. Um, I can also see that some teams who are firmly in the playoffs without a question just kind of taking their foot off the brake or, or putting their foot on the brake and just kind of taking it easy, maybe doing enough so they they don't get blown out or embarrass themselves or embarrass the team that they play for. Or then maybe it's also a little bit of mental and physical fatigue. We are at the end of an 82 game season and so you know that's mentally and physically draining on the body so maybe we're seeing some some teams are hitting the little bit of the wall but I just believe that you know it's great for the Nets just if you can keep like you mentioned if you can gain some momentum and keep it going next season it's going to be all good 
Our Athlete of the Week spotlight shines on Los Angeles Lakers legend Elgin Baylor. The Lakers unveiled a statue of Baylor, making him the 10th person to receive this honor. Congratulations. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> But when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Bro. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Now we're just going to go a little bit off topic. Philadelphia 76ers players Markel Fultz and Ben Simmons made a surprise visit to imprisoned rapper Meek Mill. According to TMZ, the trip was organized by 76ers co-owner Michael Rubin, who has been a supporter of the rapper Meek Mill. Rubin was hoping that um, Meek Mill could provide a little bit of inspiration to his young stars as they make a push for the playoffs. Now, Mike... We are at the point where we have to say goodbye to all of our friends, but don't worry, you can keep up with us until we meet again next week by following us on Instagram and Twitter, liking us on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel, all at 401 Sports TV. And don't forget to download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and TuneIn. I'm Keisha Wilson, and on behalf of Mike McDonald, we'd love to thank you for joining us this week, and we can't wait to hang out with you again.